welcome back to So Much Fun. I thought today we would learn how to do an invisible zipper. Uh, you know, the previous videos that I've done, it's been about pajama pants with an elastic waist. Well, I know everyone doesn't want to wear elastic for everything they make. So we advance from the elastic waist to having a zipper. And I want to show you the difference an invisible zipper is to what we used to use as a standard all-purpose zipper. And in this case, the sample I'm showing is a center zipper. So if you look at the two, they're side by side here, uh, how the difference uh, is the stitches that are sewn for the um, center zipper, you can see. Invisible zipper, the only thing you see is right at the very top, your, I refer to it as pull tab, and then when you open that up, you know, you can't even see the coil for the invisible zipper. These have really become quite popular. Uh, it's been, you know, now I'd say over 30 years that uh, the invisible zipper was introduced. So we're gonna go through the steps for doing an invisible zipper. Now, I like to make samples of any new technique or any technique when sewing uh, for my students because I think that works real well and I encourage my students to do the same thing. So you'll have that reference when you're by yourself at home and you say, well, I remember doing that zipper, but gosh, it's been, oh my, six or more weeks and I'm not real sure about it now. So if you have a set of samples each step of the way, it just makes all the difference in the world. So step one looks like this, that the first thing we need to do is to put, I cut, cut them one inch in width, uh, fusible interfacing on the seam allowance itself. We wanna press that on there. And the reason we wanna put that interfacing, that helps to stabilize our fabric so that uh, you know your zipper will be very smooth and you won't even see it. And our goal is for it to be invisible. So we're going to take our pants. That's what we're going to uh, use for our sample today. I'm going to put the zipper in the back, the center back. I, I like to do that. And so right along here, this is the center seam and uh, the zipper is going to be uh, on the two back pieces. So I've already uh, cut my interfacing. They're about 10 inches in length. And we're going to go to the iron and we're going to press them on. So let's go to the iron. When you're applying your fusible interfacing, you know one side is rough and the other side of the interfacing is smooth. So it's the rough side down. And you just align that one inch width strip along the edge of your fabric as to where you're going to have your zipper. And then you just take an iron, a dry iron, and you wanna press that down. And it doesn't take very long uh, to adhere the visible tape to the fabric. And you just check it to make sure it's stuck. So it's on the wrong side now, don't forget that. Don't put it on the right side make sure you're putting it on the wrong side and make sure you're doing it to the back if you want it in the back. If you're gonna put it on the side, then uh, be sure you put it on the left side of your garment. Whether it's pants or it's a skirt, it would go on the left side. All right, so I'm press this onto the fabric. And now we're ready to go back and see our next uh, part of step one. Another part of step one is showing that uh, we have a mark here and that indicates the length of the zipper. And for a skirt or pants, uh, you wanna get a seven to nine inch invisible zipper and pay attention to the package, all right? This one is marked invisible. This one is marked all-purpose zipper. So pay attention, they're all, they're all together there and so it's important that you read your package. 
and I'm sure you probably noticed that this is a 12 to 14 inch zipper. So I can easily cut it to the length that I want uh, because I, I don't have the particular size for this project, but I can use one that's a little bit longer and just uh, shorten it to what I need. So we're gonna take it out of the package here and I'm gonna lay it on the um, table to see the length that I want. And actually I could make it a little bit longer, but we're gonna go with uh, the nine inch. Lay the tape measure here and here's the full nine inches. So I don't know that I want it that quite that long. So I'm gonna say, I wanna go with eight inches. So here on the uh, pants, I'm going to put a mark at eight right there, just a little mark. And that mark is needed because again, in looking at my sample, uh, where the mark is from that point to the top of the pants, I need to have a basting stitch, which is the longest stitch setting on the machine. And then for where the mark is to the rest of the seam, we just want our standard stitch length of three. So that's the importance of the um, mark because see, we will be taking these basting stitches out and it's much easier to remove stitches that are five or six millimeters than it is to remove stitches that are three millimeters. If you notice, um, due to the fact that I'm making white pants, uh, I'm afraid to put a dark mark on the fabric because I don't want that to show through. So this pen is a Frixon pen. And when I finish, it can be removed. In fact, we'll just try it here by friction. If you rub on this here, at some point, it is going to go away. Want to put a little mark on there for me so I'll know where to change my stitch length settings. Now we're ready to pin the two uh, pieces together to sew the seam. Oh, I gotta have right sides together. That's the second step. Uh, very same thing as if we were making pajama pants earlier. Is first we sewed the inner leg seam and then the next step is sewing the center seam. So just as I uh, talked about before, uh, you wanna pin first where your inner leg seam comes together and then uh, we're gonna pin at the top. So we're gonna get all our pins in there, right there. I want the seam allowance not to get flipped over. We wanna evenly distribute our bulk. Once that's done, then we're gonna come up here to the top and pin it. And your pins are perpendicular to your seam line. So you have those pins sticking out. The heads of the pins are gonna be sticking out. Like that. Then we're gonna find, we've already got the center, so we're gonna look for the middle of these two pins. And then we're going to just keep repeating that. We don't want to uh, just start at one end and continue to the other. We definitely want the top ends to match. All right, look at this side. Yeah. Make sure your edges are together. I think you'll find after you've uh, made uh, a garment using an invisible zipper that it's actually, I think, easier than uh, the all-purpose zipper. In, in my mind, it is anyway. I like the results of it. And I think that's why it's become so popular that people like the fact that you're not seeing stitches on each side of the zipper. All right, we'll need to sew from this side because that's where my mark is. So now we're gonna go over to the sewing machine. Not all machines uh, have a base stitch length of six. This particular one does. So I'm going to use that longest stitch setting of six. It just makes it that much easier to take the stitches out. So now that I have my stitch setting, I have my guide here because I need a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And as I have said, anytime you start to sew, 
You do not want to start at the edge of your fabric. You should come in about a half of an inch from that edge. Then you want to lower your foot and then put your needle in your fabric. When you make that first stitch, hold the thread. And this is true for every, every time you start to sew. Okay, I've made a stitch. Now, especially since we're starting with a basting stitch, we want to reverse because they would come out pretty easily. So I have my guide here and I'm going to follow that and I'm going forward. So let's go backwards. Here we go. All right, so now we're ready to reverse to the edge. Now we're going to come forward, keeping a nice straight seam, very important. When you come to your pin, you want to stop. Don't try to take a pin out while you're while you're running the machine. So we're going to keep on going down here till we get to our mark. Remove the pin. All right, we're there. Now I'm going to switch over to a three stitch length. I like to use three for my seams. Oops. And I'm going to go up uh, forward two or three stitches at the three length, and then I'm going to reverse back because I want to secure that. All right, now we're just going to finish out the rest of the seam. And this will give us an opportunity, too, to review sewing a curve. I know I talked about it when uh, we made pajama pants, and now here's another opportunity. We have a curve here. So when you're doing your curve, you wanna put your right hand under the fabric. Your left hand should be on top and just in front of your foot. So you're gonna keep that seam edge in line with your guide. You're not gonna get any puckers. It's gonna go right around there at the same amount of seam allowance of five eighths. Just take your time. Don't be in a hurry. Just enjoy the moment. All right, now we're at the seam, uh, the inside leg seam. I want to take out both of the pins and go over that and just keep on going. get to the top we definitely want to uh, reverse again so I'm going to go all the way to the edge now I reverse three or four stitches and come forward again and then cut my thread because of the center curve we, we're going to need to do some trimming before we go to step two so I'm going to go back and look at our sample we're ready for step two and there are actually three parts to step two. And the first one is press the zipper. Now this, uh, initially, I wasn't uh, doing this, but finally I got enough confidence to think it's okay because some people are concerned that the coil will melt. But if you do it properly, that's not going to be an issue. So we're going to go back to the ironing board and I'm going to show you how we can safely press our zipper. In order to press the coil, uh, you definitely have to have it face down on the ironing board. And uh, you're pressing from the fabric side, and I don't know if you can see, but if you take your fingers, you'll see that there's a pretty significant curl in that coil. So in order not to burn your fingers as you're pressing it, just take pins and pin into your ironing board I'd say about an inch apart, and I'm just uh, going right in the base of that coil, what I'm doing, like that, kind of going on the same direction of the coil itself. 
Just go down the length of your zipper and pinning it is essential. If you try to hold it with your fingers, you're running a risk of burning your fingers and we don't want to do that. So about an inch apart, it's enough to get the, um, the point of the iron in, in between and be able to press the coil. Now the coil will not be perfectly flat but it will be significantly less of a, of a coil than it is now. So you just take the point of your iron and then you just run it up on top of fabric. You're always on that zipper tape, okay? You're not on the plastic. And I kind of just put it up in there, kind of go back and forth a little bit, hold it. And just continue to do that all the way down the length of the zipper. And it does make a difference. It, it really does help when uh, you get to that last step of uh, sewing the zipper uh, into the garment using an invisible zipper foot. It really helps. All right, now that I've finished that side for the package. So I'm going to take all these pins out and just turn it around and do the other side. There is a difference from the side that I pressed to how it is when you take it out. The next part of step two is unzipping the zipper, which I have done, and then we're going to hand baste it to just the seam allowance for the garment. It's not going to be a situation where you're sewing all the way through where it would show on the front of the garment. So at this point, when you do the hand basting, you want to make sure that the coil and you've got the zipper face down, definitely face down, and that that coil is going to be right where your seam is. Where you did your basting stitches earlier, that's where you want that to be. So I'm just going to do a few stitches to show you how to do it. And then uh, we'll, when I finish that, then we'll be ready for step three. So I'm just going to go along here. I, I don't pin it. I just hold it with my hand and just go and make some long stitches. And people's idea of long stitches, I would say, you know, you're talking maybe a half uh, to three fourths of an inch. You do each side separate. The important point is that you have that coil right where that seam is. That's what you want. All right, step three says remove basting. And that's not the hand basting that you just did in step two. It is the machine basting that we put in uh, at step one. So we wanna take those out. And so I just took a seam ripper and I just broke the threads uh, about that far apart to make it fairly easy to take out those machine basting stitches. And now at this point, we're going to use um, the invisible zipper foot, not your general purpose foot. Those are two different zippers feet. Um, the invisible zipper foot will have two uh, uh, deep grooves in the bottom of it. And those grooves are for the coil of the zipper. And it allows you to get very, very close to that coil. And so that's a different uh, uh, style than what you use for just putting in an all-purpose zipper. So I'm going to attach the invisible zipper foot. And you have it on uh, straight stitching. All right, so you want to make sure your uh, zip, your needle... You want to make sure your needle is in the center. And then another thing, uh, when you put the um, fabric under the foot, you'll want to open out the zipper like this, which is different than how you do an all-purpose zipper. And if the coil is on the right side, that means you're going to place it in the right groove. When the coil is on the left side, you'll put it in the left groove. So we're going to slide it under the foot. And again, we're going to come in about a half of an inch and uh, lower our foot and then lower our needle. Hold on to your thread. Make
with a stitch. And then we're going to reverse. And we've got this standard stitch length of three. And at this point, I think I'll cut off that extra thread. I don't want it to get into my seam. So give me a little scissors over there real quick and I'll get rid of that. Okay. So as you're sewing this in, just take your finger and kind of hold hold the zipper coil down about an inch in front of where the foot is. And it's pretty simple. You just sew right along there. Just go right along. So you're flattening it out even more than what you were able to do when you pressed the coil. So again, about an inch in front. It just kind of goes right along. I actually think it's pretty easy. Uh, easier than doing a uh, centered zipper. And you can only go so far and then you're going to have to stop. Because the foot, the front of the foot won't let you continue. So I go as far as I can. I'm going to reverse a couple of stitches and then cut my thread. And then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Now we want to zip this up and you have to get a hold of your little pull tab in order to be able to do that and bring it up to the front and hold it to zip. Once you get it started, zip it up. Let's turn it over to the right side. And look at there. I'll pull out those extra threads. And of course it, uh, it doesn't go to the very top edge because you have a seam allowance there and you don't want it to go to the very top edge. And there you are. Now you've got your invisible zipper. It really looks so much better than the all-purpose zipper. I hope you're going to try it. I also would appreciate if uh, you would let me know what other sewing techniques you would be interested in seeing me demonstrate. Because that's the whole idea, is to try to help people who are even uh, advanced uh, sewers, but mostly beginners in how you go about making garments. And uh, that's my reason for being here. I'd be happy to hear from anyone about that. And I hope all of you are going to have so much fun. Mm -hmm.